Thanks very much, Mark. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and a treat for me to work with Mark uh, on this conference, setting it up and meeting all of you. I don't come from the bioinformatics community. I come from the clinical informatics community. And my own work is focused on clinical decision support at scale, if you will. And the challenges that we find there, working with Ken Kawamoto and, and others uh, in the room, is how do we actually mass produce knowledge and make it uh, interpretable, computable, if you will, uh, in decision support systems and EMRs across the country. I had the pleasure at the Brigham of, uh, before transferring to Vanderbilt, of leading the Clinical Decision Support Consortium Project, which had about 30 industry and academic collaborators looking at this problem of how do we not only codify knowledge into a human readable and a machine readable form, but then distribute that knowledge in an open knowledge repository and make it uh, exercisable, if you will, via web services. And that led to a variety of very interesting papers so I can point you all to. In addition, the, uh, at the Brigham, I led the Advancing Clinical Decision Support uh, co-PI with Doug Bell from RAND and UCLA. And in that, we looked also at the principles of large architecture decision support, if you will. And I think those lessons, if, if, if we can merge the clinical decision support community and the lessons derived from it, with what's going on in the bioinformatics community with extraordinarily accelerating advances uh, in understanding of genomic medicine and, ge and genetic uh, disease, we have the chance of actually impacting, of course, healthcare across the country. So uh, with that backdrop, the survey um, that was distributed was answered by many, as Mark already said. 30 invited attendees, 25 responded, and an 85, 83% uh, response rate. And the survey was all about the desiderata of Macy's and Welch. And I won't go through these in great detail. Dan's in the room, and in his keynote, we'll talk about some of these uh, further. But I did try to apply a keyword to each and every key element, if you will, because it's too hard to remember the, the whole statement. I tried to boil it down. I didn't quite get it to a easily memorizable mnemonic, but with additional work, we might get there. <laughs> Uh, obviously, the separation of, of the molecular knowledge, uh, molecular observations from the clinical interpretations is key. The lossless data compression problem, making sure we understand the methods and the evolu evolution of methods so we keep track of how things are being determined uh, in sequencing. What are the clinically ac actionable subsets that can be created for optimal performance? How do we support this notion of human readable knowledge artifact as well as the computer interpretable knowledge artifact for broad-based decision support at scale. Anticipate changes in our fundamental understanding of uh, human molecular variation. Uh, anticipate the needs of both clinical care and the discovery science of things. Keep track of multiple genes uh, and clinical information. Keep the CDS knowledge base itself separate from variant classification. And allow this these knowledge artifacts to apply to multiple disparate EMRs. And that's kind of where it gets tricky. Some of the insights we had in the CDS consortium and in, in another work is that, of course, the EHR platforms have widely varying uh, structure themselves, both from the terminology point of view as well as the workflow point of view. So finding the right way to intervene in the clinical decision-making process at the appropriate time and place with the appropriate knowledge for the patient, for the clinical decision that's uh, under underway uh, can be tricky. But in the CDS consortium, for example, we were able to insert web service decision support into EPIC, NextGen, GE, uh, the Partners EMR, and the Regenstrief EMR. Uh, 11, keep support a large number of the gene variants while trying to simplify the CDS knowledge related, related to those variants as much as possible. Leverage standards as they emerge both in the CDS terminology representation space as well as the knowledge formalisms and the services architecture that will be used to uh, disseminate the knowledge uh, into disparate EMRs. Support a CDS knowledge base uh, that's publicly available. This was a key notion of the CDS consortium, that this would be an open repository of knowledge that could be multi-authored or crowdsourced, if you will, and that was an interesting dimension of that work. Um, Access and transmit only the genomic information necessary for CDS. Try to be parsimonious about uh, what is transmitted uh, from the record. So here are the results. Looking at these 14 elements um, summarized with a few keywords on the side, we can see that the order 
um, of course, uh, these are now ranked from uh, least less important to more important. Recalling the, the scale, one is strongly agree, five is strongly disagree. So items near one, lower down near one in the blue, are more uh, important. The red bars reflect the standard deviation for the responses, and you can see among ourselves, I think there's still some degree of variation. I'm not sure if that's due to interpretation of the key elements themselves or disagreement about uh, exactly the meaning or their intent. Here is the, uh, an, a measure called the mean difference from ideal capability. So remember each element had an importance question and then capability of current EMRs to support that function. And that was the uh, capability question. Mark came up with the interesting uh, measure of um, uh, the ideal capability minus one to get sort of a, an ordered reflection of, um, of the capability of current EMRs to do all the different things uh, in the different elements. And you can see these two are fairly divergent with s s interestingly uh, big standard deviations and some clustering perhaps uh, occurring but no EMR currently really knocks it out of the park in terms of the capabilities required for genomic CDS. We then took mean importance versus that mean difference from ideal measure and did a scatter diagram of the 14 elements and here's how they lay out in this uh, scatter diagram. And I thought this might be interesting to think about, you know, a two by two. Where do these elements fall in, you know, in a high importance near ideal uh, quadrant, a high importance far from ideal quadrant, low importance far from ideal, and low importance near ideal. And you can see that there is a bit of clustering uh, up here, and that may be a target opportunity for us to consider. Those that are of high importance and near ideal, perhaps with some gentle uh, influence, uh, technically, regulatory-wise, policy, what have you, we might be able to move the ball down the field with those. Others are uh, scattered, as you can see, but uh, this, this might help guide some of the thinking. You were then asked, we were all asked to rank the top five elements on the survey, and here's the sum of priority selections across respondents. Um, uh, you can see there is a bit of a separation, perhaps, uh, around 4.5, with kind of above-the-line cluster and a below-the-line cluster and this may help also focus attention in, in useful ways. So from the survey, I think we get uh, some insights, prioritization insights, on, on the different elements. And these are, from those two assessments I just described, they're ranked here again, or displayed here, from the import, uh, import versus low diff from ideal, and from the top five rankings, there is some consistency with 1, 5, 12, and 13. So I think the key themes from the GM7 survey, uh, we, we have a, the notion of agreement, I think, around separation of data and knowledge in all the different ways that might apply to the clinical data, interpretation data, variant data, CDS data, and the like. It's important to create machine-readable and human-readable knowledge artifacts. For those of you who don't live in the CDS world, having the conversation with a subject matter expert really can't be done over an XML document. It has to be done over a document that they can understand and interpret and discuss, uh, thus the human-readable component. We need to leverage current and developing CDS and genomic standards, and this great idea, which I'd love to see come to life, of a, uh, a shared open repository of knowledge that uh, applies to genomic medicine or perhaps to clinical decision support writ large. So that's the overview of the survey. Let me ask if there's any quick questions or discussion. If not, it's my pleasure to welcome Dan Macy's to the podium, and uh, I know you all eagerly await, as do I, uh, his keynote address. <laughs>